In 1996, a popular Sinhalese teledrama titled Sura Asura investigated the family relationship of two medical doctors, one a Sinhalese and the other a Tamil. Their family was precariously placed as ethnic disharmony took a decisive turn towards war in the early 1980s. Shyam Selvadure's Funny Boy, which Sugatapala de Silva conveyed into Singhala, ends with this same pogrom in July 1983. The teledrama Sura Asura was based on a novel by the same name, written by Sumitra Rahubadda, published earlier in 1984. The storyline follows the Colombo-based family of a Sinhalese man and a Tamil woman being torn apart by violence targeting Tamil nationals and of the husbands going in search of his wife and children to Achueli in Jaffna, the wife's hometown. The novel was written when the war was still in its infantile stage. And being from the south, Rahubadda's descriptions of violence were made out of her experiences in the majority Sinhalese areas. In the mid-1980s, the Tamil liberation movement was still a force in formation. On one hand, it tested the strength of the state army. Then, at a decisive point, it turned on itself, with the Liberation Tigers seeking supremacy among its cousins, now turned counterparts. Expatriate Jaffna writer Sopa Sakti's novels Gorilla and Traitor examine the violence that overwhelmed the Jaffna Peninsula through the mid-1980s. A former child soldier, who later became disillusioned with the movement he was a part, Sopa Sakti focuses on violence and activities of terror carried out by both the Tigers and the state troops. But more crucially, Sopa Sakti unpacks the layers of complexity that an already complex Jaffna community by 1987, the Sri Lankan state had managed to contract two wars, one in the north and in the south a standoff with the Marxist Janata Vimukti Peramuna. Following the Indo-Sri Lanka Accord signed in July 1987, a 10,000 strong contingent of Indian troops arrived in Sri Lanka's north and east as a peacekeeping force. Their arrival and how it disrupted the rhythm and harmony of northern villages is captured by Jaffna writer Ayaturé Santan's The Whirlwind. The Whirlwind is one of a series set in the 1970s and 1980s where, through largely biographical renditions set in Colombo and Jaffna, Santan maps the implosion of Sri Lanka's national hopes. The culture of impunity, blood and death between 1987 and 1990 is the closest the Sri Lankan South has experienced to a Holocaust. The 40 to 60,000 believed to have died in this turbulent period is at least four or five times the deaths caused by the JVP's unsuccessful sudden rise 16 years before, in April 1971. While numerous poems and short stories have been written against the backdrop of 1987-1990, the 
very few notable works of fiction have been composed on this site. Canadian writer Michael Ondaatje's Anil's Ghost is set in the late 1980s, but Ondaatje's spatio-temporal distance from Sri Lanka leaves the novel hollow and vague. In the Singhala, notable efforts by writers such as Lienage Amarakirti in Atavakaputtu and Kirti Valisarage in Kala Sarpa have attempted to cut through the sociology and the economy of a generation of youth who were drawn into the whirlpool of revolution. In many respects, the struggles of southern youth represented in conflict stories share with similar stories from the northern and eastern fronts. Jayatissa Kumarage, who as a 17-year-old JVP rebel led an attack on the Kaduganava police, writes in his memoir, Rebel Meets Liberation, the sense of injustice by which the village youth were drawn to rebel ideology. A voice not too dissimilar can be heard in Liberation Tiger's Kader Malaravan's autobiographical Por Ula, which in 2015 was published in English as War Journey. While Kumarage survived the 1971 uprising, Malaravan died in the battlefront in 19. 91. The ongoing conflict in the North for territorial supremacy changed many aspects of Sri Lankan life. Apart from hateful racist ideology and public ethos, a continuation of extraordinary laws for almost three decades weighed down on the democratic or the normal functioning of society law enforcement and the legal apparatus. In his Tigers Don't Confess, Visakesa Chandrasekaram draws on police corruption, forced and fabricated confessions and routine torture of prisoners. Tigers Don't Confess is set around Kumaran, a Jaffna resident university student in Colombo who is charged of being a member of the Tigers Pistol Squad. After a prolonged detention, Kumaran wins his freedom as his confession was proved to have been fabricated and obtained after torture. By the early 2000s, even though there was a ceasefire and an elusive hope of peace. The Northern War had left behind dents of a ruthless engagement. Around the same time, David Blacker with A Course Untrue and Nihal De Silva with The Road from Elephant Pass attempted to tease out the war's possibility to yield action thrillers. Both writers were outsiders to the earth of the North. A thriller in a different measure, the hard choices and touch and go moments in which life hung in a fine balance made C. Surya Kumaran's Kilali Crossing. Then, as the war ended, there were questions and wounds that were left behind. Australian-based writer of Sri Lankan descent, Shankari Chandran gave space for some of these questions in her novel, The Song of the Sun God. Here, she questioned some of the powers that be about disappearances of persons and human rights related issues that shook the post-war discussion space. 
what were the conditions in the tiny no fire zone to which a territorial struggle had finally shrunk what kind of complex choices was before the people who in the end were packed into this ignoble strip anuk arud pragasam took that conversation over in his the story of a brief marriage from 1983 to 2009 and beyond sri lankan writing has evolved through conflict extracting from it while giving back to the conflict related discussion flow the north and the south have equally been overlapping interests the condition of suffering humanity the writings soul mm-hmm.